Looking at Jade. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Caught, caught me off guard. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> couple, yeah. A couple guys looking at playing at, at uh, JC level. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. Check one. Yep. Check one, two. Coming up in just a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, the number three seed, Santa Teresa Saints, taking on the number one seed, Bellarmine Bells. Fred Landis to my left. Fred, go for it. Read it. Yeah. I know. Oh, go, oh, ahead, go ahead and read it. Read a commercial. Okay. He's right. checking levels. All right. All right. Uh, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you were Perfect. enjoying here tonight? Perfect. Tell we're your good. school. Okay. All righty. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. It's great to have you with us, as always. Sean Hennessy here, joined to my left, my main man, Fred Landis. We're coming to you live from Santa Clara High School in Santa Clara, California. You're tuning in to the 2013 CCS Boys Basketball Championship, and we've got a good one in store for you this afternoon. It's the number three seed, Santa Teresa Saints, taking on the number one seed, Bellarmine Bell. Santa Teresa coming into this matchup, Fred, with an overall record of 17 and 10, led by head coach Mitch Priest. Bellarmine coming into this matchup with an overall record of 18 and nine, led by longtime veteran coach Patrick Schneider. Big storyline here, Fred, in our pregame show. We could kickstart this with Schneider looking for his 10th, check that, 11th. CCS championship for Bellarmine. I think that's the big storyline. Santa Teresa, obviously the underdogs, the Cinderella's that are going to try to upset here this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well said, Sean. Yeah, the Saints coming in uh, with four uh, starters, uh, senior starters, and one junior. Uh, they were around when they upset Sarah a few years ago for the CCS championship. This is a team that's not going to be intimidated by the Bellarmine Bells here this afternoon. They've got the experience. Uh, the coach uh, focuses them on playing a, a motion, physical offense. Uh, we're not going to see them back down. They come in really with a lot of momentum here off of this, uh, this season. And against common opponents, uh, each of them have played El Camino uh, with Bellarmine coming out uh, with the W uh, and Santa Teresa going down uh, to El Camino. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I think we're going to see really a good coaching matchup and a matchup between athleticism here and physicality here for the Santa Teresa Saints. Physicality will be the key word you'll probably hear Fred and I use throughout this broadcast. It was one of the key topics that head coach Mitch Priest brought up for his Saints, and it was one of the topics that head coach Patrick Schneider brought up for his Bells. You take a look at Santa Teresa, Fred, and another storyline topic, if you will, this is not Santa Teresa's first rodeo, partner. They took on Sarah High School back in 2011, and they knocked off Sarah in a thriller, 46-44. They faced WCAL opponents, and they've knocked them off. Back in 2011, those sophomores who are now seniors, guys like Tajay McGahee, guys like Jamal Jackson, Aaron Gallagher, Christian Paulinetti, they were sophomores. They've experienced it, Fred. They know what it's like to go up against those tough WCAL opponents. Yeah, Paulinetti, is the, he's their leading scorer and leading rebounder, uh, although neither in double figures on each. But that tells you a lot about the Santa Teresa club. It's a very balanced scoring ball club. Same with the Bells. Uh, they will go with their classic balanced uh, configuration. They will go with what the defense gives them. Uh, if, you, if it's a physical matchup they're expecting, expect them to try to spread the ball. And if indeed it gets uh, you know, the opposite, why they can play and believe they can play physical with anyone else that tried to run the ball up on them. So great matchup here in a classic CCS Division I championship. You're tuning in to the PlayOnSports.com pregame show. In just a few moments, we're going to have the three-seed Santa Teresa Saints taking on the number one seed, Bellarmine Bells. Fred, you take a look at the Bellarmine Bells roster. There's a lot of names that jump out for, uh, at you if you think back to football season. I'm talking about guys like Kenneth Bodie, Grant Vermeer, Blair Mindy. These are football studs in particular. you got to take a look at number 20, Kenneth Bodie. You know, 
highly touted player. I believe he was actually ranked by the San Jose Mercury News as the player of the year in the sport of football. He's committed to the University of Colorado. Vermeer is going to the Naval Academy. Yeah, as, as expected, Bellarmine uh, recruits outstanding student athletes coming to that school. And not, not surprising all that they've got a couple of uh, Division I prospects and Vermeer here uh, serving his country going to the Naval Academy. Uh, Ola Bode does not unexpectedly uh, that plays that guard forward position, that swingman position for Bellarmine, showing his athleticism as a multi-sport athlete. And that's really what makes the Bells so good is they've got that versatility and they have athletes on their team. Uh, so they're able to adapt with whatever defense is thrown at them. Let's go ahead and give you the starting lineup for the Santa Teresa Saints. Number three, Taj McGahee at six feet two, 180 pounds, senior guard. Number 11, Aaron Gallagher, senior six foot guard at 155 pounds. Number 21, Christian Paulinetti, senior forward at six foot three, 200 pounds. Number 22, Jason Garabashian a senior forward at 6'2", 190 pounds. And last but not least, number 32, a senior at 6'6", six six, 210 pounds, the center, Braden Whitmarsh. Now for the Bellarmine Bell starting lineup. Number 10, Isaac Gale, senior guard at 5'11", 165 pounds. Senior guard, 6'3", at 170 pounds. Number 12, Blair Mindy. Number 20, Kenneth Olobodi, the senior forward at six feet one, 210 pounds, committed on a football scholarship to the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Number 21, Grant Vermeer, senior guard at 6'2", 190. And last but not least, Jack O'Hara, number 32, the senior center at 6'5", 215 pounds. Folks, that's gonna wrap things up for the PlayOnSports.com pregame show. When we come back, we will have the first tip live right here at Santa Clara High School. Don't go anywhere.
Ready. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Santa Clara High School as we get ready for the opening tip in this 2013 Central Coast Section Boys Division I Basketball Championship game. It is the number three seed, Santa Teresa Saints, taking on the one seed, Bellarmine Bells. Bellarmine 18 and nine, Santa Teresa 17 and 10. Sean Hennessy here with you. It's great to have you with us. As always, Fred Landis to my left. Fred, both teams out on the court now. Bellarmine with their starting five. Oleg Bodie out on the court with Santa Teresa and their starting five and their key player, Paulinetti, as Bellarmine wins the opening tip. Yeah, look for a uh, real physical matchup here. Interesting to see how this physical, they try to low post Bellarmine here and then it's man to man. Bellarmine in the white jerseys with the blue trim moving left to right on your screen and we see a traveling call from the get-go. That goes against Grant Vermeer, turnover to Santa Teresa. Saints rocking the all blue uniforms with the orange trim. And it will be up to Tajay McGahee to start things off, being covered one-on-one -on -one by Blair Mindy. Passes it over to his right to Gallagher, who then dumps it inside to the center, who's batted down. That was Whitmarsh at six foot six. He gets stuffed. So actually a traveling call there on Whitmarsh. Both teams now coming out with traveling turnovers on first plays, and that's not been uncommon in what we've seen, Sean, uh, in the beginning of these championship games with prior games. Mentioned it a few moments ago, two players on the Bells roster committed to play ball at the next level. Ola Bode on a football scholarship to Colorado and Grant Vermeer going to the Naval Academy. This is Mindy putting up a shot that hits the back of the iron. No good, rebounded by Jason Garabashian. Quick three-pointer. Off the mark, no good off the top of the backboard, out of bounds, shot by Gallagher, no good. A lot of shots early so far here, Fred. None have fallen for either squad. 7.01 left to play in the opening quarter. And the Saints coming out, man-to-man -man press. And that pass inside quickly over to Grant Vermeer. He tried to put up that hand underneath the backboard, fouled on the opportunity, so he will head to the line. And that is the way you beat a press, is on the transition games with some layups and get some players in scoring position, which is exactly what the Bells did. So we see Grant Vermeer, senior guard at the free throw line. Lining up for his second shot. And he misses both. It's rebounded by Bellman and Vermeer puts it back up for three. Forget the free throws, Fred. He wants that yes. three ball. Well, he uh, certainly made up, uh, as far as he's concerned, for drawing the collar at the charity stripe. Back over to Garabashian. He gives it to his teammate Gallagher. Gallagher searching for the lane. Polinetti has it one-on-one. -on -one. Dribbles, stops, right step. Almost appeared that he thought he traveled as he, as he slowed yeah. down his motion. A little bit of hesitation out front. Here's Gallagher. Put it up, no good. Coming up with the rebound is Gales for the Bells. Back to Gales, three-pointer. High arc on it, no good, rebounded by the Saints. That's McGahee going far court now. Saints moving right to left. McGahee from three-point land. So with six minutes remaining in the opening quarter, we are tied at three here at Santa Clara High School. McGahee really putting the pressure on at midcourt. It's Vermeer trying to work his way inside. Olabodi kicks it out. Gales, he'll come inside the paint. Beautiful pass to the three-point area. No good shot by Vermeer. Bells get it, and they will reset the shot clock on the rebound. Pass to the center, O'Hara, and he's fouled. Interesting matchup, Fred, we're going to see with the centers. O'Hara at 6'5" and we have Whitmarsh at six foot six, pretty even in terms of the overall stature between those two athletes. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of parity uh, would appear on the boards. That's why I think, uh, Sean, the quicker team, uh, quicker team on defense will get the edge here uh, this evening. Let's see how that coast to coast action works mm -hmm. for both these squads. Jump shot, no foul call this. We clearly see Paulinetti swat for it. Shot is no good. Taking the rebound is McGahee. 
working far court once again. Far left corner, dumps it inside to the center. Whitmarsh, it's batted down. And they're gonna call the reach in. It looks like that was against Blair Mindy. Yeah, outstanding give and go there from McGahee down low to Whitmarsh. Play resumes. McGahee with the ball. 5.15 left to play in the opening quarter. He kicks it outside to his teammate. That's Gallagher. Gallagher dumps it off to Garibashian to the left side, inside to Whitmarsh, off the glass and in. Beautiful ball movement by Santa yeah, Teresa. Clearly a nice uh, ball movement. They isolated Whitmarsh down low for the easy turnaround uh, off the board jumper. Olabodi charging hard, puts up a prayer, not answered, rebounded by Gallagher, no foul. Bellarmine Faithful thought there was a foul on the play. Olabodi charging to the right side of the paint. Gets nothing. McGahee. Inside, once again to Whitmarsh, stolen beautifully by Vermeer. He read it like a book, driving coast to coast, left hand, can't get it to fall. Rebounded by McGahee. He'll yes. slow it down for a moment. Really saw the athleticism there by Vermeer to uh, come up and take it coast to coast. Swatted away once again, Whitmarsh and Olabodi going at it. Olabodi with a rear side tackle. As that ball is stripped, it's Gales. Gales passing ahead to his teammate, Mindy, who finishes. Yeah, you're really seeing the physicality of both teams oh, yeah. diving for balls, not afraid to mix it up with each other. And, uh, and you saw that with Ola Bode and Whitmarsh inside, absolutely. really trying to gain leverage. Absolutely. There'll be a lot of pushing and shoving in the paint. Being a championship game like we've seen, Sean, expect the officials to let him play a little bit, uh, but not let the game get out of control if, in fact, the second half it gets a little rougher. Under four to play in the opening quarter. Long jumper for McGay. He cannot get it to fall. Rebounded by the Bells, and that was Gales. Correction, Mindy on the rebound. Tied up at five here in period number one. O'Hara gives it back outside. Bellerman slowing things down now. 14 on the shot clock. O'Hara comes outside. Whitmarsh is covering him one on one. Mindy will dump it inside now to O'Hara. Putting it up and he's fouled. It'll be Garibashian who draws the whistle. Yeah, so you really see a turnabout. Uh, sort of the same strategy that uh, the Saints used on the Bells down the other end. Get some isolation one on one down low in the paint. Draw the foul or get the easy basket this time through the foul. Jack O'Hara picking up his first point in this afternoon's matchup. Gives Bellerman a 6-5 to five advantage. Second opportunity coming up. And he misses on the second. Rebounded by the Saints. It'll be Aaron Gallagher leading the charge. Puts on a move behind the back, being covered nicely one-on-one. -on -one. And that's Schatzman providing the pressure. Now it switches over to Vermeer. Here's McGahee. Long shot, no good. It's rebounded. McGahee a second time passing to Whitmarsh, and there's a foul. Foul goes against Bellerman, and it's going to go against Blair Mindy inside the paint. Yeah, that time you saw some great handling of the ball uh, by McGahee. He took the three. The uh, rebound came to the corner, and his teammate... He wisely cut to the basket, Sean. His teammate uh, got him the ball, and when they collapsed on him, he just simply dumped it over to Whitemarsh, or Whitmarsh, rather, uh, but got fouled before he had a chance to, to follow through on the play. Seeing a lot of great assist making here by the young man, Taj, Tajai McGahee, here this evening. Six, five bells. We're in a timeout right now here at Santa Clara High School. Fred. Physicality, we talked about it in our pregame show, and we're witnessing it early on, partner. Yeah. I mean, the inside, I, I hinted at Ola Bode and Whitmarsh, and you're starting to see Garibashian now, along with Jack O'Hara, trying to gain that leverage inside. Yeah, this is a game, uh, this is where these teams are really testing one another's manhood, Sean. McGahee, quick pass. Shot no good by Garibashian. He gets his own rebound on the follow through. Shot clock will reset. 2.50 left to play in the opening quarter. Garibashian one-on-one -on -one being covered by Mindy. 
Pass goes over towards the lower left side of your screen. That shot denied as Quentin Long could not get it to fall. A white jersey closed in on him. That shot swatted away and we'll see Jack O'Hara catch a breather and replacing him on the court now appears to be Amador Nazaroff. Yeah, great block inside there by O'Hara. He rotated over. Correction, Nathan Thomas checks in for O'Hara. 15 on the shot clock, McGahee sends it left. Now inside, this will be Paulinetti and he's fouled on the shot. He'll head to the line for two. Paulinetti, a senior forward at six foot three. One of the first names that head coach Mitch Priest mentioned to us, Fred, that will need to step up big time and be a driving force if the Saints want to come out victorious. Yeah, he's uh, their leader on offense, their leading rebounder. Uh, he's been their go-to man uh, all season to help them to those 17 wins. And they're gonna expect him to do the same today. Paulinetti on his second. Misses both times. Here come the Bells as Blair Mindy charges left to right on your screen. He'll back it out. Wait for teammate Dylan Tarpening to move over to his right side. Instead, he passes left, gives it to Schatzman. Dumps it inside, loose ball, turnover. Goes into the hands of Garabashian. So turnover by the Bells will give the Saints an opportunity traveling right to left on your screen, wearing the all blue uniforms with the orange trim. McGahee fakes the drive, passes it outside. Three pointer, no good. Gallagher cannot get it to fall. Quick transition for Bellarmine left to right. Putting up a prayer. No good. That was Tarpening. Still Bellarmine's ball. Pump fake. This is Gion. He can't get it to fall either. Rebound goes to Quentin Long. Back-to-back -back shots. No good for Bellarmine. Gallagher in control. 135 left to play in the opening quarter. 6-5 Bells. Paulinetti. Inside to McGahee, his shot denied, rebounded by Thomas. Gion working the left side. Back over to Thomas, who then dumps it out to Mindy. Thomas inside, off the glass, gets the foul. It'll go against Paulinetti on the inside, his second. And a great ball movement by the Bells. Saw one-on-one -on -one coverage at uh, 10 feet from the basket and uh, made the right pass to the right man, Nathan Thomas. He's one of their backups, Sean. Uh, the Bell's got uh, a lot of height, a lot of depth under the boards uh, to spare players like O'Hara. We'll see if that makes a difference in a physical game like this. Thomas meant misses his first. And Fred, you hinted at that during our break before we actually went to the, uh, the live portion of the broadcast in the first quarter. Bellerman has a lot of height on that bench and it will become useful as this game progresses. Yeah. You know, especially in a fast transition game, which we can expect to see from both ball clubs, yeah. you know, to really help out the Bells when they can go to those bigs later on. And you, and if Case Center, your big men get in foul trouble, you've got some good backups, and that's what uh, Coach Schneider has really put into place here. As Thomas hits the second, but both teams seem to be struggling at the line thus far, Sean. Two-point advantage for the Bells as McGahee with a push-off, sets up a jumper, and it will be an offensive oh. push-off against Tajay McGahee. Yeah, really nice penetration there by McGahee. Maybe a little bit of acting job uh, by the Bells, uh, most certainly. Uh, but you're going to see a lot more of this from McGahee. He's really there out front. He is their leader on offense. Olabodi checks back in. Alley-oop opportunity just overthrown. Grant Vermeer was coming in right to left. Olabodi saw the oop opportunity just a little bit too high for Vermeer. That boy's got ups. So Fred. Vermeer, just six foot two, huh. uh, went up there like he was a power forward, hung onto the rim just to break his fall, which you're allowed to do in basketball, so uh, you don't fall and really hurt yourself uh, on the alley oop attempt. McGahee will have to get rid of it. Paulinetti. Cannot finish. Under 30 seconds remaining in the opening period. Seven to five, Bellerman. Mindy, senior guard, slowing things down. Shot clock turned off. Under 20 remaining now. 
really taking his time. Bellerman will utilize all of the remaining time to get one last shot off before we move to the second period. Mindy pushing it out lower right corner of your screen, dumps it far court. And this will be Vermeer. Back over to Mindy, three ball. Off the iron, no good. And that puts the first period in the book. Seven to five, Bellerman on top of Santa Teresa here at Santa Clara High School. You're tuning in to playonsports.com, your destination for high school sports. So do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the great game we're enjoying here today? Well, so tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Sean Hennessy, Fred Landis coming to you live from Santa Clara High School on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. You're tuning in to the 2013 CCS Boys Division I basketball championship game between the number three seed, Santa Teresa Saints, taking on the one seed, Bellarmine Bells. Seven to five is our score as we get ready to start the second period. Fred, I mentioned in our pregame show that Santa Teresa, the underdog, the Cinderella, if you will, yes, they are the three seed. They are familiar with this. Back in 2011, they knocked off Sarah in a thriller, 46-44. I say that because they've taken down one WCAL opponent. They feel they can do it again. Uh, absolutely they can, and with a 7-5 score at the first quarter, it's at the right pace that favors uh, their ball club, their pace of play. Uh, Coach uh, Priest wants a slow down game. Uh, to keep it close, as they did to beat Sarah. Whitmarsh can't hold on to it. Bell's in business. Olabodi kicks it out. Three-pointer, no. Driving now is Vermeer. Got it. So Grant Vermeer gets the bucket now with five points here in the first half. McGahee passes to his left. Lower near corner of your screen. This is Polinetti. He kicks it out to Long. Long driving in. Back to Polinetti. Left side. Being covered one-on-one, -on -one. now he dribbles towards the inside of the paint. McGahee back outside, and we have a push, pushing foul, rather, by Blair Mendy. He can't believe it, shrugs his shoulders. Yeah, a lot of aggressive, a lot of pushing around between Mendy and McGahee. We're going to see that, you know, typically you see that a lot out of the uh, underneath players, Sean. This physical type game, we're seeing it out of the the guards, uh, which tells you a lot about this type of game. So as Mindy picks up his foul, number 22, Danny Schatzman will replace him. Gallagher being covered one-on-one -on -one by Isaac Gales. Gives it to Whitmarsh, to McGahee, three-pointer. No good. A lot of action underneath that bucket. Saints foul, and they're gonna say that's on Polinetti. Yeah, he uh, used his upper body, just pushed a little bit that time. In this physical type of a game, each team's are gonna be pushing with their hands and arms. It's who doesn't get caught doing it, Sean, is gonna survive. Schatzman looking for a lane, gives it outside. Now Olabodi back to Schatzman. You can tell he's searching for the big. This is Gales, no good. Rebounded, can McGahee hold on to it? And he does, balancing along that sideline. Saints in business, moving right to left. One step bounce pass over to Whitmarsh. Goes off the foot of a Bellarmine player. The inbounds will be for Santa Teresa along the baseline. 6.38 left to play in the second period. Nine to five, Bellarmine. And McGahee is a rangy six foot two, Sean. He's able to get some of these loose balls uh, because of his range and his quickness. McGahee just got that off as he passes it to Long. Possession arrow will favor Bellerman. McGahee was searching for someone, but his body posture with the ball against his hip was very lackadaisical, if you will. He was waiting for someone to get open on the inbound. Yeah, you have to, your, your players have to help you out on those plays. Often five second plays get called because not for the passer, but for players not helping by moving around. Shotsman driving inside. Hand off to Gales. Gales kicks it out. Schatzman once again, searching inside. Appears to be the big man, O'Hara, as the ball rolls out of bounds. Last touch by a blue jersey. Yeah, that time uh, O'Hara tried to go back door to Ola Bode, 
And uh, Saints were in the way, taking away the baseline pass. Shots been over to Gales. 12 on the shot clock. This is Vermeer. Three ball off the iron, out of bounds. It will be Santa Teresa ball. So Vermeer misses from three point land. McGahee will take the inbounds with 6.07 left here in the second period. Once again, McGahee looking for somebody to get open. And there it is, five second yeah. violation. So you notice that time, Sean, players were running from the ball, not to the ball. And it took them a little bit too long for others to come up to get into position. Uh, hence the, uh, the violation. So they do have to run to the ball. If nothing else, you need a player, just run right in front of that inbounds man. Let him hand you the ball and get up court. Here's Vermeer driving underneath baseline. Olabodi, no good. Pushed out of bounds. It appeared to go off O'Hara. Saints can't believe it. From this angle, it looked like it was last touched by Jack O'Hara, head coach Mitch Priest of the Saints. Furious at the call, up on his feet. It's passed out quickly to Gion. Vermeer knew it, he traveled. So we're really seeing Bellerin getting many more shots at the basket, getting, having an easier time getting up court, Sean. Uh, Saints struggling a bit with this press. Uh, and also their shooting hasn't been what, uh, what Coach Priest would like. Uh, McGahee, a little bit off tonight. He needs to get hot, and uh, as well as uh, Pal Palinetti uh, on, on offense to bring the Saints here back into this game. Long checks in for the Saints. Thomas in for the Bills. Palinetti over to McGahee across the far side of the court. Back in the middle to Palinetti. Looking for the big inside. Whitmarsh is outside with 12 on the shot clock. Now he moves in. Nathan Thomas playing center inside. Whitmarsh kicks it back out. Four on the shot clock. Polinetti misfires. Rebounded by Garibashian, and he's fouled. Some great defense by the Bells, keeping the ball on the outside, forcing Polinetti to take the long one, and a nice offensive board by Garibashian. Garibashian at the right place at the right time, getting that key rebound. And he sinks his first free throw. The score is now nine to six, Bellerman. 519 left here in the second period. As Quentin Long heads back towards the bench. And now is Tyler Shaw for the Saints. And Garabatia misses his second. Pass quickly over to Gione. Up to Schatzman, Schatzman kicks it out. This is Mindy, back to Schatzman. There's Thomas, that's what they wanted inside. He'll back it up, now fades away in the jumper, yes! They were looking for it, Fred, the whole time. Yeah, they were, they were isolated, they did, get, did give the Saints time to drop another man back to double team him. And that foul will go against number 22, Danny Schatzman. He will head towards the bench, replacing him as Grant Vermeer with five points. He checks back into the ball game. McGahee on the inbound. 11 to six, Bellerman. See a lot of hand checking going on out there on defense uh, between these two ball clubs, especially at the guard position. Garibashian putting up a tough shot and he gets it to fall, Fred, on the fadeaway. Garibashian has been the man thus far here for the Saints, John, with uh, Polinetti and, and McGee not off uh, to the start on offense they would like. Gales will run the top. Beautiful pass inside to Thomas and he's fouled. He was by himself underneath the bucket and closing in late yet again is Jason Garibashian. He'll draw the foul. And that is his third, so he's probably going to have to hit the bench here and with four see, minutes left in the quarter. And you see Quentin Long getting ready to check in as Thomas hits his first. So this was the difference I was talking about earlier. Depth under the boards oh yeah. is something that the Bells could exploit. 
against the Saints here this afternoon. The Saints getting foul trouble, and the Garibation's been their leading rebounder so far. Thomas knocks down the second. 4-15 left to play here in period number two. It's 13 to eight, Bellerman. Double team in full effect. That Bell's defense stifling. As Polinetti tries driving hard, and he'll get the call. Nice, hard defense by the Bells, but you can see the Santa Teresa player still a bit standing around, not running to the ball to help their teammates out. Polinetti was very lucky just to get that ball, because oh, that yeah. was a loose ball pass. Oh, yeah. Polinetti nails the first free throw. He's now one for three at the line here in the first half. 4.04 left to play in period number two. Ola Bode checks in, and catching a breather will be Jack O'Hara. Polinetti with the second. Another type of game where foul shots will be crucial as this game goes on, Sean, when it's a low scoring game like this. Dylan Tarpening in the game now at the three-point line. He'll take it. Misfires. McGahee with the rebound. McGahee finds a lane, drives it, stolen by Gales. Beautiful job on the defensive front by Gales. Stripping that ball, and the Bells are in business. Gales will set it up and gives it back to Vermeer. Vermeer checks over at head coach Patrick Schneider for the play call. Now the Saints come out in the zone, Sean, just to confuse them up, and sure enough, deflect the pass. Man advantage as Gallagher slipped. Vermeer noticed it, but he slipped up as he bobbled the ball and it rolled outside the baseline. The Saints mixing it up, going into a 2-3 zone, making uh, the Bells shoot over them. Uh, just trying to show them different looks, uh, does Coach Priest, uh, to mix it up some. Gallagher with some fancy dribbling over to Quentin Long. Long tries to look inside, swatted away into the hands of Grant Vermeer. Vermeer, for a second time, bobbles it and has it go out of bounds. A little, just a little bit too much rushing it up court. Some uh, not taking their time. As Patrick Schneider signals to the official, timeout on the court. 30-second timeout, Bellarmine 13, Santa Teresa 10, here at Santa Clara High School. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Fred Landis and Sean Hennessy here with you at Santa Clara High School. This is the 2013 Central Coast Section Boys Division I Basketball Final. The number three seed, Santa Teresa Saints, taking on the one seed, Bellarmine Bells. Bellarmine with a three-point lead here in period number two. And the inbounds pass appeared to be stolen by Gales. And we're gonna and see a- Looks like a foul. A foul against Santa Teresa. And Gales will go to the line. So what happened? Uh, yeah, Polinetti's looking around, what, who, me? Exactly. He was on the out of bounds, <laughs> man. He says, it couldn't be me. And it uh, looks like his teammates correcting him and saying, no, Gallagher is saying, no, I did it. Don't give it to my teammate, I'll take it. I'll take my fouls. And looks like the referees have straightened that one out. It looks like they called 21 on the foul, Polinetti. And it's actually Gallagher was the culprit. Correction, it is Gallagher as Gales hits his first. Makes the score 14 to 10, Bellerman. Gallagher merely wanted to stop an easy layup. Yeah. That was the only point of the reach and the grab. And Gales goes two for two. And really a heads up play. He's only, it's only uh, second quarter. That was, uh, was his first foul. Uh, the good news is uh, for the Bells, they hit both free throws. 
McGahey always searching for that lane, gives it to Long. Back over to Tajay. Beautiful pass inside to Long, but he cannot finish. Outstanding Loose back door. Rebounded by Paul Netty. The shot clock will not reset. 10 seconds. Looking inside to Whitmarsh, stolen away by Olabode. Kenneth Olabode with the steal. Grant Vermeer leads the charge. Pass far corner. Baseline dribble, kicking it out to Gales. Three pointer. Off the mark, rebound, Olabode, and one! Olabode was excellent position inside as he got inside the Saints, got inside of Whitmarsh there uh, for the putback. And uh, that'll send him to the line. And you can slowly see the bells here kind of chipping away, creeping away from uh, the Saints. Uh, a lot of this off at the free throw line as well, uh, Sean. Gion in for the Bells. Garabashian in for the Saints as Ola Bode converts the three-point play. 18 to 10, Bellarmine, their biggest lead here in the matchup. Just over two minutes left now in period number two. Three ball, denied, and it goes out of bounds. No good for Christian Polinetti. Bells will inbound. Well, that's the kind of shot Polinetti's gonna have to take to get uh, the Saints back in. He into had a this. good look at it. Yes, he did. So just a little bit uh, off the left arm, maybe rushed it a bit. As Gales tries to set it up, you see now Gion signaling to Gales. Gales looking for Olabodi, nobody home. And it's a sloppy pass that falls into the hands of Garabashian. On the transition, blocking foul. Gallagher gets the call. He'll head to the free throw line. Gallagher went down hard uh, on his right knee, it appears. but And he is favoring he's, it. Uh, he's going to stay in. He says, Coach, don't take me out. I'm taking two at the line. And he went down. To, he went against three Bell defenders. Uh, almost an inevitable foul uh, to get through all of them successfully. So Gallagher converts his first. Chantrice is going to have to get at the line more often here tonight, mm -hmm. Sean, uh, if they're not, especially if they're not hitting their foul shots. That time on the turnover. Gallagher converts the second. Cuts the deficit to six. A buck 30 left here in the first half. Olabode inside, kicks it out to Gion. Three-pointer. Yes! Yeah, that time the defense was collapsing underneath, protecting the inside as they did last time. Uh, Bell's getting some points in the paint. When you leave, you cover up the paint, leaves a three-point shot available. Paul Netty bounce pass to McGahee. Draws the foul, can't get the shot to follow. See, that time McGahee posting in the paint. They need to get him the ball. He needs to get some points. He makes things happen on offense for this team quite clearly. Uh, and they've really relied on him this year. You can easily see that to get in the open court. And when they collapse on him, he dishes it off. Olabode picks up his first personal. McGahee misses on his first. One minute and two seconds remaining here in the first half. 21 to 12, Bellerman. And McGahee hits his second, it's now 21-13. Olabode with the inbound. Vermeer, O'Hara, Gales. And Gion on the court for Bellerman. Patrick Schneider talking with the official. Apparently, uh, Having some scoreboard issues, they gave the points here to the wrong team. Gave it to uh, the Bells, not the Saints. It should be 21-13, Bellarmine. Game clock here at Santa Clara High School shows 22-12, Bellarmine. They'll get that fixed. We'll give us a moment to chat about the Northern California Regionals, Fred, which take place next week. The selection process will conclude tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Both these teams qualify for the Northern California Regional Tournament along with Wilcox High School who is 
going to compete, or has been competing rather, in the Open division. Yeah, yeah there is life after the championship uh, in the region. That's the good news for both ball clubs. All of Bodie, beautiful bounce pass to Vermeer. Very nice backdoor play from Ola Bodie, gets the assist. Uh, that's what actually the Saints need to do a little bit more on offense too, uh, on an over-pursuing defense that the Bells have been thrown at them. Polinelli, Polinetti, I beg your pardon, to Gallagher. Over to the left side, Garabashian. Kicks it out to Gallagher, fakes the three-pointer, gives it to McGahee, he'll shoot the three, misses. Rebounded by Gales, 23 on the game clock, shot clock is off. Just a bit too much standing around on a man-to-man -man offense that time by the Saints, John. Vermeer with a strong push off. Saints fans hate it, no call. 10 seconds now. Olabodi covered one-on-one -on -one by Garabashian. Gives it to Vermeer. Vermeer moving to his right, behind the back, and there's the push off. And Coach Mitch Priest basically gave the... <laughs> The old body move like, thank you for the second yes, one. <laughs> yes, uh, it's one of those that's about time, but there apparently you go. Uh, Grant that time, if he had not raised his elbow, Sean, and just raised maybe his forearm, he would not have gotten caught for that, but he pointed with his elbow, and you're gonna get called on that every time. And bounce pass, no good, as Olabodi tries to throw up a prayer. 23-13 here at the half, 10-point lead for the Bells. Folks, stick around, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, Fred and I will kick off the Play On Sports Halftime Show. Don't go anywhere, Bellarmine 23, Santa Teresa 13 at the half.
Welcome back to Santa Clara High School. This is the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Sean Hennessy here with you. Fred Landis to my left. The score at the half, 23-13 in favor of Bellarmine on top of Santa Teresa. Santa Teresa, the three seed. Bellarmine, the one seed. Bellarmine's leading scorer, Fred, at the half. Grant Vermeer knocked down a three, hit a couple deuces. Leading scorer for the Santa Teresa Saints. Tajay McGahey with four points. McGahey missed a lot of shots there towards the end. And I think the Bellarmine defense really kind of stole the show towards the latter portion of that second period by putting on some stifling defensive pressure, forcing Santa Teresa to take some awkward and quick shots. Yeah, absolutely. They, they really stifled them with athleticism all the first half. That certainly was the story of the first half. McGahey only going one out of six from the field, Sean. Uh, that's certainly not him. Uh, Palanetti, who they also rely on, uh, 0 for 3 uh, from the field. He's got two, uh, but he's got, uh, looks like four rebounds here. His total points, uh, really less material here when you've only got 13 as a team. But it's that shooting percentage kind of hurting Santa Teresa, uh, as well as uh, the Bells have nine points off of turnovers. Nine of that 23 off of turnovers versus three for the Saints. So that's a big story of the game right there. Tribute to the defense you mentioned. Ten point advantage for Bellarmine at the half. Head coach Mitch Priest leading his Saints back out onto the court to start the second half. Santa Teresa knocked off Sarah back in 2011, 46 44, as they captured the CCS. D1 basketball title, their only CCS championship. As for Bellarmine, they've got this coach by the name of Patrick Schneider. And I tell you what, if there's any coach that has a lot of tout and has a lot of history with his program, it's head coach Patrick Schneider. He has multiple WCAL titles and 10, count it, 10 CCS basketball championships. Fred, one for each finger, how about that? <laughs> Well, I think uh, on me, if I had to wear all those rings at once, it'd probably weight me down. I'd be uh, dragging my knuckles in a hurry. Saints, what a great problem to have. Yeah, yeah. Saints with the inbound to start the second half. They trail 23-13. Saints moving left to right on your screen. McGahee with a hard drive, knocked out of bounds as Whitmarsh went up for it. And they're going to say it was last touched by a white jersey. Bellerman moving right to left on your screen as we switch sides to start the second half. So McGahee coming out driving to the basket so rather than Coach No Doubt told him, make some action, you'll get a lot more action going to the hoop. Garabashian, short jumper, no good, cannot get it to fall, gets his own rebound. Shot clock will reset, puts it up and in. Outstanding second effort by Garabashian, getting the board and the putback off his own shot. And I'd really like to see that, Sean. We don't see enough kids following shots get rebounds uh, in, in, the, in the game today, and Garbagian is a strong exception to that one. Danny Schatzman, the culprit on the foul. Jason Garabagian at the line, trying to complete the three-point play. It goes in and out. Garabagian now one for three at the free throw line. Mendy looking for Olabodi. Olabodi checks it to his left to Gion. Back over to Mendy. Mendy, lengthy athlete, works the right side, gives it over to Gales. Gales dumps it inside O'Hara. O'Hara backing down Whitmarsh, and there's the foul on Whitmarsh. Whitmarsh a little stunned. It'll be Whitmarsh's second personal. Past O'Hara quickly underneath, nobody home. O'Hara took advantage of it. Yeah, just a lapse on defense on uh, that time, Sean. This is Garabashian out to Whitmarsh. He's not a three-point shooter, so he'll have to cut back inside. This is Gallagher now. Gallagher passing to his right. Polinetti, and the foul appears to go against Bellerman. A lot of physical play taking place underneath the bucket. Jackson Giome was there, as well as Polinetti. Yeah, absolutely, a lot of pushing and shoving. Whitmarsh not backing down from the phys physicality offered by the Bells, particularly under the basket, Sean. 
McGahey driving inside. Jumper off the iron, no good, he misses again. McGahey has had better days. As we see Mindy unable to convert his jumper. 10 point lead for the Bells here in period number three. Six minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Jumper, good, nice and short, but executed perfectly by Garabashian. And Tajay McGahey picks up, I believe, his third personal. Uh, that is correct. As Blair Mindy will go one-on-one -on -one with McGahey now at midcourt. And ball stolen, that's Gallagher, but no, it's Gales. Gaining leverage, Olabodi inside, pumps once, goes up and draws the foul. That one was probably on Polinetti. 21, yes sir. The over pursuit by Gallagher gave Bellman a man up advantage. They saw Olabodi underneath and he took the quick strike. Yeah. Olabodi converts his first. Now that is three fouls on Polinetti and Garabasian. You could see a little foul trouble coming into play this half, Sean. Olabodi. Uh, Coach Priest may look, uh, look at his bench here pretty soon. Olabodi four for four now from the free throw line. Gallagher nearly losing his step, kicks it out to McGahee. McGahee driving towards his left, dumps it to Whitmarsh, swatted away by O'Hara. Phenomenal defensive play by Jack O'Hara. Closing in now is Mindy. Mindy trying to work the outside of the paint. And they'll have a jump ball outside. Who will the possession arrow favor? It looks like Santa Teresa, no Bellerman will be in business. Mindy will inbound from the baseline. Olabodi. Outside the three-point arch, long pass to Gales, fakes the jumper, now he drives inside. 10-footer, off the iron, no good, rebounded by Gallagher. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in period number three. 27-17, Bells. McGahey looks for the spin, nobody home, long three-pointer off the mark by Garabashian. Whistle blown. And it looks like a foul on Whitmarsh. That's going to be his fourth. And Coach Priest is just going to have to pull him out, uh, Sean. And they're going to need a big to replace him. It's going to be Quentin Long. So you're basically substituting six foot six for six feet. So look for the Bells to kind of work more, th more stuff underneath. Sure. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Here it is, O'Hara on long. He's got a six inch height advantage, kicks it outside, had room to go in. Long jumper, no good, rebounded by Gales. Underneath, hits the bottom of the backboard. Stolen away, it's Schatzman, and he's fouled. So Danny Schatzman at the line now. Fred, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, easily, you can take advantage of that mismatch in the paint, and you're right. Uh, O'Hara certainly had room there in the paint. He could have went to uh, his right, uh, but chose to kick it back out for the three. Instead, turns out, Bells end up with two from the charity strike. And correction, that was Jackson Gion at the free throw line right there, number 24 for Bellerman, converting both. Long, working inside powerfully, and, and he gets back it. In again. So we see why they have put Long underneath, even at that height. He's got a big body on him, and it's not going to back down from a player like O'Hara in spite of the height differential. Gales coming inside, puts up the right-handed layup, no good, rebounded by Garabashian. And the Saints moving quickly now. McGahey fakes the three-pointer, dumps it to his teammate, Paulinetti. Trying to back down Gales outside the three-point line. Now he dumps it off, working inside. Swatted back by O'Hara. He's stunned as the whistle blows. O'Hara thought 
Hits himself. Certainly he got all ball, but he did get him with the body going up as Garabajian, uh, as we've seen so far, he leads with his body to the basket. So it's very difficult to block his shot without fouling him too. Garabajian has had better days from the free throw line. He's now one for four. Looking to convert his second. He cannot. Free throws killing the Saints this game, Sean, in addition to that stifling defense by the Bells. Mendy to O'Hara. O'Hara comes out looking for the open lane drive. Not there. Olabodi driving baseline. Kicks it out to Mendy. No foul call. Mendy posting up strong. Rebounded O'Hara. And looks like Polinetti's going to get the call and the foul. So Whitmarsh coming back in with four, with four fouls under his name. Coach saying, as far as he's concerned, there's no Damara. Uh, he's down 12 points, Sean. Uh, he needs his uh, biggest player in that game. So O'Hara misses the three-point try. Three minutes, 37 seconds remaining in period number three. It's 31-19 Bellarmine. Gallagher to McGahee, McGahee. I don't know how he got that sort off. Sort of a running jump shot there. But he did. I'm not sure what, he knew what he meant to do. He thought of driving, but saw the opening, popped it up, and with his athleticism, doesn't surprise me, it went in. They're gonna say traveling. Traveling on O'Hara, who is dribbling strong along the right side of the paint, coming in late, was Christian Polinetti. Falling on his back. I thought for a moment Polinetti might get dinged with the foul. Yeah, it did certainly look that way. But it was O'Hara who took an extra step. O'Hara now on the bench. Replacing him will be number 42, Nathan Thomas. Thomas and Whitmarsh, the two centers now. McGahee, jumper from the free throw line. In and out, hard break. Ugh. In and out, McGee, he can't believe it. McGee, on got Mindy. Away with a, almost got away with a foul there, Sean. And Mindy puts it up left-handed after a beautiful behind the back display of dribbling. Mindy now with four points. And there's Garabashian. Hanging in midair. He draws the foul and will head to the free throw line to shoot two. And if you're Santa Teresa, you've got to convert now to get back in this game. Trailing by 12. Garabashian hits. He's now two for six. Make it three for seven. Deficit cut back to 10. Vermeer in the ball game for Bellarmine. Mendy looking for that low post, nobody home. Saints Mendy will take it zone. straight ahead. And he's fouled, is it Whitmarsh? No. Galliers can't claim in the foul. It is Whitmarsh. It is Whitmarsh. And now they're gonna say it's his fourth personal. So correction on the previous statement. Now it is Whitmarsh with four. It will be a one and one. Mindy hits the first. Two minutes and nine seconds remaining in period number three. Mindy lining up for his second. Hits both. 35-23, deficit back to 12. 
as Gallagher searches for a lane. Over to Garibashi and inside the paint, stripped away by Olabodi. And there's the Bellarmine hustle. Interesting to see if Coach Priest will look really to his three-point game, uh, Sean. Uh, setting up McGehee out front for some threes, getting some long looks to get them back in this game, change some, some momentum. Uh, they haven't had much in the way of threes here tonight, but no. really haven't tried. Uh, might be now, might be the time to start. Only two players with three balls are Garibashian and McGehee. And Defense. correction, it's actually just McGehee, and that came back in the first period. As that ball rolls out of bounds, 134 on the game clock. Blair Mindy with the inbound. Finds his man underneath, and it rolls in and out. Loose ball battle. Paulinetti comes up with it. Garibashian working all about. He's stolen away by Vermeer. He read it perfectly. Bounces it off the foot of Gallagher, out of bounds, possession arrow, Bellerman. Yeah, nice rotation on defense in the backdoor, doubling down, getting that double team on the low post man. The, uh, they're already running over there to front the man. It's very easy just to come in and knock the pass away, get the steal just like he did. Ola Bode with the inbound, committed to Colorado on a football scholarship. As Vermeer works his way around, Olabodi working the screen. Mindy sees something along the baseline, puts it up, and in. Nice drive around the screen by Mindy. And we're seeing just that lead kind of creep up there now at 14. Uh, they, the Saints have to start looking at their three-point game here to get some momentum. This is Garibashian with a nice twirl, draws the foul. Yeah, Ola Bode just said, what, who, me? He just had his hands up. He's sort of wondering uh, whether or not uh, Love Taps uh, weren't in order for that foul. I believe that's Ola Bode's second yep. as Garibashian hits his first. But Garibashian, like I mentioned, he leads with his body. It's just very difficult uh, to block his shot without fouling him with a body, even for a physical footballer like Ola Bode, Sean. And Garibashian converts his second. So Gales checks in, catching a breather, will be Schatzman as he heads towards the Bellarmine bench. 40 seconds now left in period number three. It's 37-25 Bellarmine, looking to close this one out as we head to period number four. Mindy passes inside to Gales. Gales double team slips out, looking for Vermeer. Vermeer driving hard, left side, kicks it out. Three pointer, Gione off the iron, no good, rebounded by Vermeer. Shot clock is off at 16 seconds. It's Mindy and McGahee going of, at it. A lot of hand checking among those two guards, Sean. Here's Thomas, right hand, and he gets it. No bucket. Does not count. Looks like he charged. And Fred, now we're seeing Patrick Schneider utilizing his bench. We're seeing multiple substitutions taking place. On the flip side for Santa Teresa, virtually none. Yeah, and uh, they're the ones that are in the biggest foul trouble, too. Yeah. There's really no one in foul trouble uh, uh, for the Bells. Gallagher half court shot. Is no good, it goes off the glass. And with points. I'm not sure what the referee told the scorer's table, Sean. With .5 on point the game five. clock. I think he's just telling them when, when he should have started the clock. And the officials are signaling that that will conclude the end of the third quarter. Yes. It's nonetheless academic. Uh, one of the few uh, quarter ends that didn't end in a buzzer. Uh, maybe it's my headphones. Do you hear, hear that buzzer, buzzer, Sean? Never sounded, but no. the PA announcer is signaling to the crowd here that the 
Third period is in the books. Oh. And we'll I see. suppose mystery of the game thus far. And now they have switched it over. So the third quarter in the books here at Santa Clara High School. One quarter left to go as we will wrap up action with eight minutes left for the Division I CCS Boys Basketball Championship game. And this is quite a matchup here this afternoon. Uh, so if you want to see and watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you're enjoying here this afternoon, tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports school broadcast programs. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter at Santa Clara High School. Sean Hennessy here with you. Fred Landis to my left. The score is 37-25. Bellerman. Bell's looking for their 11th CCS title. Santa Teresa in search for their second. They've got some work to do, trailing by 12. Gallagher kicks it outside. Air ball, no good shot by Polinetti. Defense was closing in. So they start off this fourth uh, quarter shot, uh, Sean, with a three, and I suspected Coach Priest was going to start looking for his better shooters. Expect to see players like Whitmarsh, Garabajian, and McGahee try to set them up for some early three-point looks. Whitmarsh good on his first, and that is Whitmarsh's first point since way back in the first half been quiet thus far, obviously in foul trouble. He converts both. Full court press now for the Saints. It's McGahee versus Mindy. Here comes the screen. Mindy reads it like a book. Driving hard, swatted down by McGahee, but he's charged with the foul. That may be his fourth. It is on McGahee. And I think you may be right, Sean. Actually, it's... That is his fourth personal. So that's two players with four for the Saints who they could really ill afford to use, uh, lose keys to their game all season long. McGahee, correction, Mindy misses his first. and drains the second. Interesting now to see, will they run some rotation out front? And how about McGahee, the and length? I guess that answered my question. If McGahee can run the, uh, go the distance, they're gonna let him do it. The length of McGahee right there, just trying to utilize any space he can with a strong right hand flip. Yep, he's just a, such a rangy guard. He's so quick, but he's so very rangy, Sean, which is why he gets all these rebounds too. Santa Teresa faithful chanting ST, trying to get their team back into it. 38-29, Bellerman, O'Hara backing down Whitmarsh, now he dumps it outside. Eight on the shot clock, Mindy from three point land, backs up McGahee. Three, two, now he takes the shot. No good, Gallagher with the rebound. Shot clock violation. And I think Mendy looked over, he was looking for the foul uh, that time as certainly after the ball took off, there was definite uh, contact on the wrist. But unless it's flagrant, the officials are gonna let him play, I think, in this fourth quarter. Gallagher driving hard, he will get charged with the travel, Isaac Gales on the defensive front right there. Right along the inside hip pocket of Gallagher like a defensive cornerback would in football. Yeah. Hmm. Forcing Gallagher to travel as he falls down. It's a turnover. Here in the fourth quarter, as Gallagher now dribbles nicely, looking for the pass. Hits Gion, Gion dumps it inside, nobody home. Swatted away. Saints with the ball. McGahee, long three-pointer. Yes! That's sort of what I thought might begin to happen here. He has a nice touch from distance, Sean. And uh, the Saints can 
knock a few of those down, their momentum can bring them back into this ball game. A full timeout for Santa Teresa, it appears. They would like to have a discussion. Mitch Priest with his squad. As they have now cut the deficit to six, Fred, in this ball game. At one point it was 12, they've now cut it to six. Patrick Schneider on a chair right now, chatting with his Bellarmine squad, going over some adjustments here. In the fourth quarter, Bellarmine leads by six, 38-32. Winner of this game will be crowned 2013 Central Coast Section Boys D1 Basketball Champions. Looks like, uh, yeah, a little X and X's and O's chalk talk. Uh, I think he's mainly showing he's, he's going to talk to his players about how to adjust to play that three-point shot because that is what the Saints will continue to try to do. Even though there are six minutes left here, they aren't urgent threes, but they need to be timely threes for momentum. And with a lot of their leaders in foul trouble, they cannot afford a lot of contact. Though. They can't afford offensive fouls now. They really can't afford any a lot of contact play, period. Six minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Fans really starting to get into it now. Vermeer back over to Mendy. Mendy to Gion. Gion looking for the alley-oop to Vermeer. Cannot get it to fall. Rebounded by Polinetti. Polinetti nearly got a nearly got call with the elbow as O'Hara gets charged with the foul. Garibashian will head to the free throw line. I want to go back to that last play. Vermeer was coming in and he was looking to get that rebound as Polinetti started to push up court. He had that elbow in yep, there, pretty yep, high. Absolutely. Garibashian sinks the first. I've been very impressed with Garibashian's physical play tonight. Uh, and just, he is just willing his team in this ball game with the rebounds and uh, the workmanlike fashion, fashion of his, uh, his playmaking. Garibashian having a nice second half in terms of his scoring, but he missed right there in his second. Because they have, uh, the Bells have shut down Polinetti. Uh, and so other guys really have to step up and Garibashian has been one of those players. Vermeer has it go between his legs. Saints in business. Garibashian looking for help. Finds McGahee. McGahee, one-on-one. -on -one. It's Mindy trying to cover him. McGahee will just step back and take it. Nobody home gets his own rebound. Shot clock resets. Gallagher will slow it down for a second. Works the left portion of the court. Falls into the hands of Polinetti, who puts it up and in. Just as I said, Polinetti's been shut down. He does a nice drive to the basket. The Saints really relying on one-on-one -on -one play here, Sean, uh, in the final minutes of this ball game. And probably more so than I think that they should. Stolen away nice by steal. Gallagher. Gallagher driving hard, has McGahee, keeps it himself, and it's in. It's a whole new ball game as Santa Teresa cuts the deficit to one. So turnovers, the three-point shot earlier by McGahee, turnovers this time, and it looked like at this point the Bells are running out of a little bit of gas out there, don't have the aggressiveness they once had. I think they felt with this game down into the final minutes, uh, they just had to show play, stop the three-pointer, uh, but you saw when they tried to do that, Polinetti merely just drove it into the paint, hit the two pointer and uh, Gallagher with a nice steal gone the distance. Timeout on the court, 38-37. Bellarmine, we talked about it a few moments ago. The deficit was 12 at one point. Now it's one and Fred, we're seeing new life with this Santa Teresa basketball team. Garabatian stepping up big time. How about Gallagher coming up with that steal? Bellarmine getting a little bit sloppy here yes. late. Yeah, a little bit of lax a days ago. They were, they're actually looking to sort of milk the clock a little bit, not anticipating uh, aggressive over pursuit by Santa Teresa. And uh, I'm sure Coach Snyder just gave them a little bit of talking to about that very point. 
We have four minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bellerman with the ball. Mindy shifting over his offense, gives it to Gion. Gion to Schatzman. Schatzman in on the court now. Fresh legs for the Bells. Vermeer long three-pointer. It was tipped. It appeared to be tipped by Paulinetti. Instead, it'll be an air ball. Yep. Saints will take over. You would appear to be right uh, on that one. I did also thought I saw a tip. Gallagher runs it. He'll take the point. Covered by Schatzman. Gallagher driving hard left. Gives it to Polinetti, who works the inside, lowers his shoulder, and they're going to say traveling on Polinetti. He can't believe it. I'm a little surprised at that call. I, I certainly would have expected after a player lowers his shoulder, generally he's going to get called for that offensive foul. Coach, uh, Coach I, Priest just furious. Yeah, he uh, obviously agrees that uh, it was a call, no call, or no call, call as the case may be. So 4.20 remaining now here in the fourth quarter. Officials throwing some towels on the court to dry up the perspiration. One point differential here between the Bellarmine Bells and the Santa Teresa Saints. Both these teams qualify for next week's Northern California Regional Basketball Tournament, along with Wilcox, who is currently seated in the open division. Bells working. Vermeer outside, Schatzman, three-pointer. The big three-pointer for the Bells. Needing a little more momentum offensively after a bit of a drought, Sean. Paul Nettie from that far corner on the left side or right side of your screen. Whitmarsh with the rebound. Now he's backing down. Thomas gives it to Gallagher along the baseline, stolen away. Grant Vermeer with the steal. Here comes Ola Bode. And he has it swatted away. Paul Anetti charged Paul with the foul. He does not like that call. He made a nice run out of nowhere to knock that ball away. But they're going to say he, he fouled him with the body. So Christian Paul Anetti coming up hard from the backside and Ola Bode. Heads to the line, hits his first. Ola Bode, five for five. Can he make it six for six? And he does. Ola Bode, perfect from the free throw line. Tremendous job shooting from the charity yep. stripe and helping his Bellarmine basketball team. This game gets down to crunch time, Sean. Uh, he's going to be the guy they're going to want at the, at the charity stripe. McGahee over two. Polinetti in that far corner once again going in and there's the foul. This one's going to go against Vermeer. Vermeer and Polinetti just having a tussle in that corner. Neither player backing down. And he's been stationed in that area of the court throughout this entire matchup. That's his go-to spot yep. as he hits his first. But you said it, partner. I mean, it's it's Vermeer, it's Paulinetti. And Paulinetti feels that he has the size to back down his opponent, drop back, and then just put up a soft one as he misses his yeah. second. Three minutes and 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 43-38, Bellerman. McGahee trying to reach in and grab a hold of that ball. Vermeer in control now. Kicks it over to Schatzman. Schatzman fakes the three ball. Stuck in the left corner of your screen. Gives it to Thomas. Thomas, no good. Gets his own rebound. Fouled on the second approach. Ola Bode was wide open underneath as they came over to double Thomas. Thomas didn't see him. All he had to do was drop him the pass, but uh, fortunately gets to the foul line. Actually, uh, no foul. Possession no foul. arrow stays with Bellerman. Oh. Even uh, Nathan Thomas. Even Nathan Thomas thought he was foul right there as he was walking towards the line. Yeah, it certainly looked like a foul to me. 2.55 remaining in period number four. It's 
Santa Teresa marching back in this one. At one point trailed by 12, cut the deficit to one. Now they trail by five here late in the fourth quarter. Olabodi all by himself as Gallagher backed off. Mendy will take it across the far side of the court. Now it's Vermeer. Vermeer back to Schatzman. Schatzman puts on the fake, gives it to Mindy. Mindy, long pass to Vermeer. Wide open look from three-point land. Cannot convert. Gets his own rebound. Now it's a battle. Who's going to get it? In possession, Ola Bode. Shot clock resets. Huge hustle play by Bellerman. Absolutely. Great hustle on defense uh, with Vermeer going after, uh, following up his own shot. Schatzman over to Mindy. Mindy taking his time. 13 on the shot clock. Inside the paint, Olabodi pushes it back outside. Vermeer! Nice kick out play. Big three point shot there with two minutes left in this ball game. Takes the lead back to eight. Gallagher kicks it outside. Garabashian. Olabodi putting on some great defensive pressure, nearly stripped it. It's Whitmarsh. Now he'll drive baseline. Puts it out to Gallagher. Gallagher. 12-footer, no good, rebounded, and converted. Paulinetti. So Paulinetti puts it in. Santa Teresa timeout. Six-point lead for the Bellarmine Bells with 1.41 left to play here in the fourth quarter. So don't go anywhere after this game, folks. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where Sean and I will select our player of the game and wrap up all the action here this afternoon. So that's coming up immediately following the game on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we have plenty more CCS basketball action coming your way later tonight over at Santa Clara University. We will have the boys and girls open division championships taking place uh, in just a few hours over at Santa Clara University. So when you're all done watching this, keep that laptop or that iPhone open. You can catch it. all the action in the open division later tonight right here on playonsports.com. But in the meantime, it's 46-40 in favor of Bellerman. Trying to close this one out. The Saints not giving up. Paulinetti put up that bucket just a moment ago. Timeout on the court has concluded. We've got a buck 41 left here, Fred. If you're Santa Teresa, if you're head coach, Mitch Priest, a lot of your guys have foul trouble here. Yep. What do you do in this well, situation? The only thing you can do is have players uh, like Gallagher, who has one foul and long with one foul, to do the fouling. You don't have a lot of choices. Otherwise, you've got to play some tough D, maybe actually give them some more outside shots. Just try to force a turnover of possession, even on a missed shot. Schatzman backing off a little bit. 12 on the shot clock, 117. And Coach Schneider knowing the uh, Saints are in some foul trouble. He's really trying to milk it here a little bit earlier to force that. And there's that foul on McGahee. They're going to say uh, possession arrow, Santa Teresa. Check it. I guess that was a possession clock. No foul. No foul. So no foul, no shot. Good defense by the Saints. Bells tried to take the air out. Saints got the ball. One minute left, folks. This is it. McGahee outside to Gallagher. Saints trail by six. Paulinetti puts up a left-handed sky hook. Nothing. Converted. Rebounded by the Bells. Vermeer. Saints will have to foul. They give it to Ola Bode, who misses. Schatzman looking outside. There's the whistle. And uh, the right guy do the foul, of course. Gallagher, although at 44 seconds left, less material. I'm a little surprised that the Saints didn't set up for a three-point shot. Uh, no doubt, Bell's playing deep, giving them something underneath. Yet, uh, they really didn't choose to take it. I'm a little surprised at that down three with a minute left. Not setting up for the three. Schatzman misses his first. 44 seconds left in this one, folks. Huge free throw right here as Schatzman nails it. Now makes it a seven point game. Jack O'Hara will check in for the Bells. 
Whitmarsh, Polinetti, McGahey, Gallagher, as well as Garibashian on the court for the Saints. They trail by seven, 37 seconds left. Garibashian taking a lot of time, but he drives strong and finishes, gets the bucket. Timeout, Santa Teresa. Garibashian has been the man when they've needed him, Sean, to come up with key buckets. Uh, just when you need one, and that certainly was key right there. And you could sense that Bellarmine was backing off a little bit as yep. the defense started yep. to close down. Yeah, a little surprised they really came out and, uh, and pressed them, uh, making it just sort of a sag press there, just making it just difficult enough uh, to force them to work to get it over uh, the mid-court line, but not enough to risk a foul and stop the clock. Uh, but as it goes, uh, a loose defense will also lead to a layup like Garibasian got, and he's exploited the situation. 14 points for Jason Garibasian, 11 of those 14 coming here in the second half. Yeah, he's had a huge half. Olabodi will inbound. Finds Jack O'Hara. Substitution for the Saints as they now have TJ Bird on the court getting his first action. The senior checking in and he will give the foul as Coach Priest makes some moves, or makes some moves rather so that he can get those players who are currently in foul trouble off the court or at least sub them around. And he's really putting the right players on the ball handlers for the Bells. The players with the fewest fouls on the ball handlers coming up court, coming up court rather, to stop the clock. So Bird came in to make the foul. Now he goes back out of the game. McGahey back in on offense. And you're going to see him try to take the ball down the court, no doubt, as uh, one of the offensive players. O'Hara, one for five from the line. So here he comes as I had suspected. McGahee, three-pointer, nothing. Loose ball, rebounded. It's drug in by Amian. Once again, McGahee trying to push off and get it up. He draws the foul, and that'll go against Blair Mindy. McGahee to the line. And I think with that three-point shot, uh, Sean might have put this game in the refrigerator here for the Bells, I dare say. Uh, with 13 seconds on the clock, seven point lead. Saints at the line. As McGahee drills the first. Now is when your free throw shooting is crucial, particularly if you're a Bellarmine Bell. And as Coach Schneider brings Jason Jackson Gian off the court, off the bench, McGahee misses his second. Vermeer rebounded and fouled. And he'll head cross court to the free throw line. So Garbagian had a foul to give. And that'll stop the clock. 12 seconds left. Here's Vermeer missing his first. Vermeer, 0 for 3 from the charity yeah. stripe. So. Make that 0 for 4. Little wonder why Coach Priest said to foul him. Shot blocked, Vermeer with the rebound, and he's fouled by McGahee. Coming up and trying to get that shot off was John, Amy, and Fred. He hasn't had all that much action in this particular game, and he was just blocked right away trying to put up a prayer. Yeah, absolutely, uh, at this point. Uh, and that was even inside the three-point land. I'm a little surprised, even though those prayers <laughs> are coming a little closer than maybe they should. Uh, I was surprised they didn't really kick it back to a player like... Uh, McGahee to shoot the three, although he is out of the game. So Vermeer hits his first and gets off the free throw, Schneid. Three seconds left here in the bowl game. Vermeer converts. 
Timeout on the court. So the Bells looking like they're breathing a bit of a sigh of relief with three and a half uh, in the game, Sean, remaining. Coach Schneider just telling his team, nobody foul. And he'll probably say that a few times. Nobody foul. Don't let them shoot the three-point play. And nobody foul. It's pretty simple at this point in the game uh, what you do on offense. For Coach Priest, he has to rely on some, uh, some fouls and some missed free throws and a couple of long three-pointers. Uh, but you've now got a really a three possession game which is pretty difficult with three and a half seconds so just three and a half seconds left folks stay tuned to the play on sports.com post game show immediately following this afternoon's matchup gallagher throwing it up it's well short and the bellerman bells have defeated the santa Teresa saints by a final score 49 to 43 to capture the CCS Division I Boys Basketball title. And Patrick Schneider celebrates his 11th CCS championship. And uh, what, a, what a showing by the Bells. You saw their depth really begin to pay off for them underneath the board. According to what I can see, no one had more than uh, uh, three fouls for the Bells. And uh, the Saints... <laughs> Well, they see action again next weekend, Sean. They had a number of guys with, uh, with four fouls. Uh, they had to play a little bit more gingerly here coming down in that fourth quarter, but a gallant effort by the Saints to get back in this ball game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it was, you know, it was by the shooting abilities of Tajay McGahee and Jason Garabashian that got them closer into this matchup, eventually cutting the deficit to one and really trying to, tighten things up but at the end of the day it was the Bellarmine Bells and they had like you mentioned partner at the beginning of our broadcast they had the luxury of a lot of depth on their bench and they had a lot of guys that started hitting some key free throws Kenneth yes. Olabode perfect from the line the other guys that came up strong uh, towards the end Jackson Gion also went perfect how about Jack O'Hara having a phenomenal second half second half he had 10 points in the second half for the yeah O'Hara certainly came alive and that's this is the type of play team that as uh, as coach Schneider said uh, he says who's going to be your big score he says well that depends on how they guard us and as they switch things up the right players rose to the occasion and O'Hara was that person as they got in a little more foul trouble in the second half the Saints that is players in the paint like O'Hara stepped up their game folks stick around we have concluded the Boys CCS D1 Basketball Championship, but we will come right back and have our player of the game interview in just a few moments. Fred and I will talk things over and pick our play on sports player of the game. Final, Bellarmine 49, Santa Teresa 43. We'll be right back with more action from Santa Clara High School.
Congratulations to the Bellarmine Bells. They have defeated the Santa Teresa Saints by a final score of 49 to 43. Our play on sports player of the game, the senior center of Bellarmine, number 32, Jack O'Hara at six feet five, 215 pounds, finished with an incredible second half. 10 points overall, 11 points here this afternoon as he helped his Bellarmine Bells capture their 11th CCS title. When we come back, I'll have a live interview with Jack O'Hara of Bellarmine. Don't go anywhere. Get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, 
Go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
Welcome back, folks, to PlayOnSports.com. Sean Hennessy here with you to my left. Jack O'Hara of Bellarmine as the Bells knock off Santa Teresa 49-43 to capture the 2013 Boys Central Coast Section Basketball Championship. Jack, heck of a performance out there. Thank it was you. a physical basketball game oh, yeah. from start to finish. What was your game plan like with the short amount of time in preparation for Santa Teresa? So we were going to play off their guards because they're very quick on the ball, and their post of a player is great. Um, so we were have our smaller, our power forward guard him, and then me come help side to try and stop him in the post, and it worked out for us most of the game. When Santa Teresa started to get in foul trouble there, primarily towards the middle portion of the third period. What was going through your mind? What was your team's mindset like when they started racking up some key fouls? We just got to take it to the basket. I mean, when we're coming to the basket, they're fouling most of the time. And pump fake maybe twice and then up, and we we're getting the fouls. That was working for us. Jack O'Hara, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game. Once again, final score, Bellarmine 49, Santa Teresa 43. They capture their 11th Central Coast Section Basketball Championship. Jack, let me, let me ask you this. You got the NorCal Regionals coming up next week. Selection process will start tomorrow. You guys will find out where you're seated. You'll find out all that good stuff. What do you take away from this particular matchup in preparation for NorCal's? Oh, we just got to go strong every game. We expected to be a little farther away. If we came out of the gun, we were on fire for a while. We went up, I think, 15 at one point. Uh -huh. but we just got to finish the game and keep going through. How good does this feel for the old ball coach, head coach Patrick <laughs> Schneider? Oh, it's got to feel good for him. Uh, this is the 11th and I think 14 tries, and it's great. It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Jack O'Hara, congratulations once again. Our PlayOnSports.com player of the game, Bellarmine victorious. They take care of Santa Teresa once again, 49-43. Folks, stick around. We'll be right back to wrap up all the action here at Santa Clara High School. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the PlayOnSports.com post-game show. Fred Landis rejoined alongside me. Sean Hennessy here with you as the crowd starts to make their way outside the Santa Clara High School Gymnasium. Bellarmine defeats Santa Teresa 49-43 to to capture their 11th Central Coast section title. Jack O'Hara, Fred, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game up here just a few moments ago talking about the victory talking about the importance of knowing that they needed to feed the ball inside the paint when Santa Teresa started to get in foul trouble. I asked him that question, you know, what was going through your mind when the Saints started to rack up those key fouls? 
and he just highlighted getting it inside, dumping it to the bigs. It seemed to work out well for them along with the solid free throw shooting. Yeah, absolutely, and that's where their depth and height on offense makes a difference. Uh, of course, solid free throw shooting always helps you down the stretch. Uh, the Bells uh, were not lacking with that. Ola Bode, perfect from the line, as you mentioned here tonight. O'Hara, two key blocks of shots uh, down the stretch. Uh, just playing tough, causing havoc underneath all game long. And he was a handful, given look at the foul trouble oh, yeah. that the Saints had to deal with uh, underneath Polonetti, White, uh, Whitmarsh, uh, all of their big men uh, had some difficulty with foul trouble. So clearly the athleticism of those big men for the Bellarmine Bells was the difference here tonight. This is the PlayOnSports.com postgame show, 49-43. Bellarmine knocks off Santa Teresa. They are the Division I CCS champions. Now they will move on to the NorCal Regional. So, Fred, we had a chance to watch Santa Teresa, which had a very a very good team. I, I think if you look at McGahee, for example, the kid can shoot. He had a rough first half, started to light it, light it up towards the second half. You take a look at Bellarmine. They are once again the CCS champs. Both these teams move on to the NorCal Regionals. Let's start with Santa Teresa first. They're gonna kickstart their action later next week. What did you take away from Santa Teresa that you liked here tonight or this afternoon that you'd like to see them progress on later next week? Yeah, I think uh, their, their athleticism is, is underrated. Uh, coach likes to man up, get very physical, uh, but I see a lot of athleticism. Players like uh, uh, McGahee, who's very good in open court, and you noticed in the second half, they got him driving to the hoop a lot more, mm -hmm. getting him in open space. He's not just good from three-point land, uh, but he can drive in open space. Uh, I think those are key assets here uh, for Santa Teresa. Uh, and let's not mention, uh, forget about uh, Garabajian. Sure. Uh, he carried this team when uh, the, their leading scorers, uh, like Polonetti, were silent. Uh, McGahee was not hitting his shots. He was consistent. Uh, he's the physical part of that play. He makes a good inside-outside combination uh, with Taj uh, McGahee, as well as, of course, Polonetti, who seems to do a little bit of both, which mm -hmm. is why he's this team's uh, leading scorer. So that's why I really see that athleticism really being key for them. They just suffer from a little bit of depth problems, and they need to keep these, uh, these players out of foul trouble. How about Bellarmine? What did you like? What would you like to see them carry into next week when they start the NorCal's? Yeah, the Bells, uh, clearly, as I can see, they don't rely on any one player. You look at that score sheet, and you see uh, more than one player can hurt you on this team. Uh, tonight, O'Hara, our player of the game, didn't lead this team, team in scoring, but his defensive prowess, uh, when it counted, when Santa Teresa was in trouble, uh, was was very very telling. Uh, also, I see them as just here's a, here's a team that really can run it up the court on you a lot easier for their size. Uh, they may a lot of to teams will like try to slow them down, play big man on big man, uh, but they've got athletes that can do it all. Uh, their football players on the team, Ola Bodie, we can see him. Uh, go free range, inside out, guard forward, swing man. That athleticism is really going to carry them, and I see any team having difficult matchup problems with them next weekend. Folks, that's going to do it for our live coverage here at Santa Clara High School. I'd like to thank my producer, Mike cronin wet my camera operator, David Custon, and, of course, my analyst, Fred Landis. I'm Sean Hennessy saying we will see you next time right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. So long. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot.